Hello Polygoners! We've got an exciting Zerg vs Protoss for you today and as you can see from the lings moving across the map it is a 12 pull into a fast expand. This is here on the bottom right hand side in the blue Zerg chunks it's Railgan and being attacked here in the red are Protoss chunks. He has a zealot out on the field trying to repel the lings with these two gateways and a cyber core. It's Sloth Gaming's very own Astrea. Now, Rogan is a player you guys may know. <coughs> He's actually been featured quite a bit on like Falcon Paladin's channel. He releases a lot of replays. Good surface area on this initial zealot, second one popping out. Little unfortunate is going to go ahead and pull these links, try and kill off this probe. Going to block that uh, Nexus if he can. No, actually, not going to manage to do that. Still trying to get us around on the zealots. Does not manage to do that. Mothership Court does drop a pile on overcharge. Going to chase these links right on out. And that is the end of that attack. That attack not doing a whole hell of a lot except delaying, delaying, delaying that Nexus. Now, the fact is a hatchery was laid down for our Zergy McFerguson question and now becomes has he mined any 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 whatsoever gas no I'm not sure what the deal with that extractor was or when it was laid down but that was a little bit brutal so Railgan has a lot of decision making now he is definitely going to be behind on economy, although he did get a second base up a little bit quicker. He's going to have to get a, like a faster third, have to deal with like that kind of pressure. He's got these two zealots in his face. He's got some interesting decisions to make. Now, the queen is here. Lynx trying to knock down this destructible debris. However, the zealots are there. He's going to go and pull off. Does end up losing two of them to the zealots. Some nice micro here by both of these players. The zealots trying to keep the surface area to a minimum by moving in a diagonal pattern. That's interesting. Love the fact that he's still committing to knocking down this rock tower rather than pursuing off of creep. Only just now starting link speed eh, just before four minutes into the game. So it's going to be a little while before he gets any real map presence. The queens are going to help knock this down. And as you can see, there is no uh, layer yet. The gas has been quite neglected here by Railgan. Meanwhile, on the other side of the field, we do have a Twilight Council. We're going to be getting Resonating Glaives. So Astrea seeing some weaknesses and the fact that there is no link speed yet, Adept's going to be trying to wreak havoc as a result of this. It looks like a third base is a goal for Railgan, but these two zealots are going to be super annoying about this. And uh, Railgan not going to be able to take that as quickly as he'd like. You can see him floating about 400 minerals, now dipping to about 250, 300. Uh, zealots baiting this queen as far off of creep as they think they can get the lings trying to surround in here. Adepts now on the field. We got a lot of lings on the field as well, but the queen is off of creep. That's not a good feeling, guys. Very, very careful to zone the queen with these lings. Really good moves here by both of the players. And as you can see, the adepts threatening to go into the natural. The zealots are going to be, uh, cleaned up, but does get the queen first. And there's a surround on the zealots. Ah. Oh! He let it go, he let it go, but he does get the Zealot. More depth showing up on the field. Still no uh, uh, higher tech from the Protoss. This could end up hurting him. Warp Prism is going to be on the way. Lings do have Ling speed now, and he's killed off a fair number of the Adepts. Does get that one as well. Does that shade out? Yeah, that's going to shade on out. And a third base is going to be on the field now for Astrea. Uh, these Adepts are going to have to be careful to shade, not to get surrounded. And as you can see, that one weakened adept did get surrounded, but these two adepts did get away. So those are the more valuable of the adepts. And as you can see, Ling's got to be very careful not to allow this third base to get up as Railgan one, it has to be one base ahead. Even bases uh, with a Protoss, not a good situation. So he wants to cancel this, but the Mothership Core does drop Pile and Overcharge, kills off the Pile, and though Ling's going to get, looks like, get the adepts as well. Ah, oh, thinking about it. He did kind of target the probe, a little bit of indecision there by Railgan, but ultimately going to get repelled. He did reset the army count, though, of his opponent. Despite that, Australia has basically the same army supply as Railgan. These links still trying to be super annoying. Um, Depth's definitely plugging the hole in the wall. Trying to get in there. Sentry is going to gonna, gonna end that. Warp Prism... Nah, trying to be annoying. But basically, this is going to become like the technological setup phase of the game. That's very standard after a failed all-in. That or, you know, more all-in. But looks like these players are going to be getting, well, a forge in this case, meaning some upgrades, 
Some more gateways. Blink's going to be on the way. We've already got Resonating Glaives. Looks like Hydra's already on the field. Can help deal with this Warp Prism. Um, these Ling's also there to deal with that. Hydra's... I like the positioning here by Rogan, actually. This is, this is nice. Like, see how he's kind of got it zoned? This Warp Prism's pretty much useless at this point. Now, every Zerg's worst fear, Dark Templar. This is going to be a very delayed Dark Templar, but... The game opened weird, so whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll let that one slide. Uh, so Blink, Blink Stalkers, Adepts, Brutal. We've got Immortals, Warp Prisms, and Dark Templar. That's a lot of gas, but he's got three bases. Um, we'll see what he really commits to. Does he continue making Robo Units? He hasn't been for a little while now. Um, some cannons going down. Definitely going to be useful at the third base as uh, Zerk love to get aggressive around this point. And uh, Relgan's already shown a proclivity to that this game. Now he tends to play macro quite a bit as well. And ooh, looks like pathing, messing him up a little bit there. Actually no, he's just choosing not to go for those rocks. Alright, so he's going to go... Well, it looks like he's actually shifting his army in like a zone position. He's kind of cleared this zone. And now we've got a hallucinated phoenix scouting the army, so Railgan knows if he's going to attack, he's got to. And looks like Astrea's already in position here against these rocks. That could be actually bad for Railgan. He's got a mostly Hydraling army. The cannons are actually there to, to knock back this army. So we'll see what he chooses to do here back at home. Oh my god, we've got Shadow Stride. That is DTs with Blink, guys. Are we going to see Dark Templar with Blink? Well, Infestation Pit going to be completing. Looks like we'll probably be seeing a Hive here shortly. A uh, little bit of harassment. Uh, actually, no, that was just Hallucinated Phoenix. Going to go ahead and knock these rocks down that he committed to uh, dropping earlier. Not sure why he would want to do that. Eh, hmm, okay. Uh, it gives him a lot more mobility, and Zerg is the faster race, so that kind of makes sense, actually. Now, Dark Templar are already on the field. There's not any... Uh, Sport crawlers or overseers here at this third base. This third base could possibly be forfeit. Oh my god, it, it is killing it so fast. So we've got two overseers morphing, and actually, instead of hive tech, we're actually seeing swarm hosts coming out of railgun. This is an interesting decision. Not a unit you see a lot of, and not really in this matchup, especially, but this could be an interesting decision. We've got Dark Templar with Blink against swarm hosts. Mm, not sure what ends up winning, winning that battle, but. Anyways, this Dark Templar are definitely going to kill off this Queen. Ooh, brutal, right? That plus one really starting to pay dividends. And, however, the Spore Crawler is going to allow Lings to come in and clean this up. Uh, Overseers in this position going to keep uh, the Dark Templar out as well. Looks like a Dark Templar going to try and sneak in here, but gets surrounded here by the Lings. And, yeah, yeah. The uh, Swarm Hosts definitely have been scouted, I think. Australia might be having a WTF moment right now. He is moving out onto the field, though. So these two rocks are actually the only thing uh, separating these two armies. But it looks like he's going to try this path instead. Taking a little time on the Swarm Host. Not actually choosing to go ahead and uh, to pop those just yet. Um, we still got the Hydralis targeting down these rocks. These players, oh yeah, the Swarm Host, going to knock Astraea back. He was really using that almost as a positional thing to knock back those force fields and just waiting for the force fields to expire, letting the uh, Swarm Host units go ahead and kill off as much of that gateway army as they want to. Meanwhile, there have been some Dark Templar here in the natural. Third base is still getting a little bit set up, whereas the Protoss is on four bases. So definitely major props to Astraea, who has managed to get an entire base ahead of his Zerg opponent. This is a great position for him on the back of these Dark Templar. Plus two oh, attack is on the way. Railgan not in the best of positions, however... Swarmers present an interesting opportunity because you don't necessarily need to be up a base if you're using free units in the form of swarm hosts. So I'm not sure how that's going to factor into this. If Railgan has a saving grace, it is going to be that. Meanwhile, Astraea going to be attacking here from the southwest corner and going to be attacking right here on this third base that really just got mining again. We've got the Hydraling army and swarm hosts going to be trying to pop up a few units as well. Now, Protoss army should just be able to back away here. But, ah, uh, yeah, yep, gonna basically wait out the locusts here. 
And while this is happening, the Lings are sticking with that main Zerg army. I'm actually surprised um, that we're not seeing more harassment here out of Rogan using that, but perhaps he feels like he needs that to hold the Stalkers, or particularly the Immortals, since the Stalkers have Blink in place. There are still three Immortals out on the field, so that could be one of the factors. Swarmhost hiding behind this destructible debris, but that does leave this hatchery completely exposed. Force field's going down, and that is going to be the end of that hatchery. Yet again, a third hatchery being built on that right hand side we see now why those rocks were being knocked down meanwhile we do have that final counter attack we were talking about lings and hydras going into this little weakened crevice that he had knocked down earlier and this is going to be the forfeit of at least one gateway second gateway going to be falling here as well and we've got a little bit of harassment here on the third base but most importantly is that cyber core while all of this is happening the swarm hosts have been staying at home defensively which is an interesting choice because it's not typical that you see swarm hosts much less defensive swarm host we've got the third base has fallen this natural has fallen this third base could be incredibly brutal however hydralis on this third base we've got lings in this uh natural we've got the swarm host just moving out on the middle of the map doing everything they can to zone 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 there is a 90 army supply lead right now for railgun so while astraea did manage to take a bunch of bases we've got some huge army right now from Railgun, and I think he may be able to take this. This is a huge, huge endeavor for him. And still, the Swarm Host doing great defensively. I'm loving this defensive Swarm Host play. I never thought I'd see defensive Swarm Host, though. That is, that is, that is crazy. Now, this base has been killed as well, so we are down on one mining base for Railgun, whereas a, a, his opponent has, like, you know, a bunch of bases. Not really any of them mining just right now. Oh my god, I. <laughs> what the hell are we watching, guys? <laughs> Let me know what you think of this game in the comments below. Like, do you think Australia made a mistake? Do you think Railgan um, is just playing really unorthodox? Or is there, like, a method to this madness? Guys, please, please. I love to hear your theory craft. Let me know in the comments below. And it looks like this game is going to be stabilizing here. And weapons a level 3 going to be completing for Australia, which is super brutal, especially on those Dark Templar. However... Uh, are there any Dark Templar on the field? No. Any other? One? Yeah, one. Okay, um, so a lot of those have been turned into Archons. We'll see how that ends up working out for them. But the Swarm is just doing so, so good here. Oh my god. I guess maybe this is an answer to, like, to the Archons, maybe? Swarm Host beat Archons? Is that is that the thing here? Is that the lesson we're supposed to learn? Uh, Okay. That, that's pre pretty phenomenal, guys. Um, does Australia still have a chance at all? Like, there's minerals, but this Zerg army, man, is three times larger. No upgrades, three times larger. And free units. Those free units really count a lot. Oh, man. <laughs> Railgun definitely teaching us all quite a bit in this game. Australia played impeccably. I don't think this is over. These force fields, man, these are some sick, nasty force fields. This, uh, pr well, I thought there was going to be a battle there. Protoss army choosing to engage, but no, no, it was a false alarm. Definitely the Fabian tactics. Alright, so we got this Dark Templar leading the pack. He basically wants to hold that base. But the thing is, Zerg is a little more mobile. And how is he going to manage to defend everything? Like, especially this back and forth thing between these two really close bases. Long distance mining on the ass. Alright, so we got the swarm host. This that's gonna be the end of this base. Boom. Done. There's still all this tech here. Alright, so we've got some mineral income now for Australia. We'll see if Railgan chooses to go ahead and commit to this attack or is just gonna rebuild his infrastructure. Infestors! Alright, so we got some investors on the field. That's uh, just one investor, one viper. A uh, little bit of support unit for his primarily Hydra, Hydra Swarm Host army. Alright, so here we go. Blinking right into some Locust. Does lose uh, one Stalker. This Dark Templar killing off a Spore Crawler. Overseer going to be swinging in here to uh, deal with that. But no, no, does not actually not get the kill. And is not aware that he did not get the kill. That's even bigger. But is it? No, no. It can't be big enough. Like, I went from thinking Australia had this in the bag to thinking Railgun has this in the bag. I don't want to make sure they don't know any more caramel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alright, so, 
Uh, Stormhouse Hydra is pretty effective comp, guys. Um, you got the plus three, plus one. Definitely taking out these uh, these drones. Long distance mining. Now both players sitting on a very similar worker count, but it just seems like Railgan's value in this like hundred army. I don't know. Is Blink cooldown? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna be able to get out of there. Really nice micro here by Rogan. Actually anticipating that blink out. Looks like he is going to go ahead and pop the locust. Now the blink's not gonna be there. Trying to actually block the swarm host. Or like the, the stalkers with the swarm host. Now we're pulling the um the stalkers here with the viper right into the, the, the locust there. And it looks like we are taking another base uh, uh, for Railgan. Another base coming down for Astraea. Trying to reconsolidate both of their positions. Looks like this could actually go for another 10 minutes or so if these guys get a stable economy. There's still an 87 supply advantage in army count. Why is Railgan still letting this go on? Alright, so yeah, Swarm Host definitely going to catch this. And could probably just migrate right on over there, like half there. Boom. Yeah, actually, that was that was really nice. That was not the entire amount of swarm hosts there. Really good choices here by Railgan to kind of split how many of these locusts he's using at any given point. Tell me, does he have another volley? Yeah. See, that's awesome. That's actually really cool. Dark Templar actually still doing work, but not anything too important. And yeah, there we go. Nice blink, but not quite enough. Dark Templar with Blink. What was Blizzard thinking? And is this the final throws? Is this it? Alright, looks like the Hydra's coming in. The Swarm Host is still trying to like zone the Hydra's and keep like the surface area down. I guess it keeps like zealots off of them, maybe? I don't know. It's it's really interesting just to see how he's moving them. Like, is that an accident? Is that purposeful? I don't know. Anyways, Australia calling GG in what was definitely an intense, insane game, guys. I am Shaft with Polygon Gaming. This game actually started out with a 12 pull. It went to Australia killing off Railgan's third base, uh, keeping that down, ending up getting a base ahead, and Railgan still managing to eke out a victory. A phenomenal player that is Railgan. Guys, if you like this cast, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, share it with your friends, and if you want to, visit us on Patreon. It definitely helps support this channel. It helps support events in the North American community. Uh, if you want to help support the Hope Team League, that is the current event we are working on, please visit us on Patreon if you are interested in helping out with that. Guys, thank you so much. Until next time, shout out my dudes. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.